So the first part of this question wants us to state the defining equations for a Fourier series for a function f of x which has a period of 2 pi. So we need to look at the equations that were given at the start of the question. These are given for a general period L, and then we simply need to convert from a period L to a period of 2 pi. So wherever we see an L, we just replace it with 2 pi. So if we do this, we find that f of x is given by a0 over 2, and then it's the sum n equals 1 to infinity, and then it's a n cos n x plus b n sine n x. So that's the definition of the Fourier series. And then we can write that a naught is given by 1 divided by pi. It's the integral between naught and 2 pi f of x dx. a n is given by 1 divided by pi the integral between naught and 2 pi, f of x cos nx dx, and bn is given by a similar formula, 1 over pi, the integral between naught and 2 pi, f of x sine nx dx. So these are the formula that we need to use when our function has a periodicity of 2 pi, which is the case in this question. So the rest of the question requires us to find the value of a naught and then values of a n and b n. So we'll start with a naught. A naught is given by 1 over pi. And then again, it's the integral between naught and 2 pi, f of x dx. Now, if we look at the function, we can see that the function is only non-zero between naught and pi. If we take the period as being between naught and two pi, between pi and two pi, it has a value equal to zero. So we can find a naught by taking one over pi, then integrating between naught and pi. Over this range, the function has a value equal to x. So we have to integrate x with respect to dx. So that gives me one over pi. If I integrate x, I get x squared over two naught and pi, that gives me pi squared over 2 pi, which is equal to pi over 2. So that's the value of a naught. So we've now found the value of a naught, we now need to find the value of a n. a n will be given by 1 divided by pi. Again, we only need to integrate between naught and pi, where the function is non-zero, and then we have x cos nx dx. This is a slightly more tricky integral than the integral we had for a0. We're going to have to integrate this by parts. This is going to give me 1 divided by pi, and then I'll integrate by parts. I want to get rid of the x, so I'll call x the function u, and cos nx will be the function dv by dx. So the first thing is I need to integrate dv by dx. Cosine nx when integrated becomes sine nx and we bring out a factor 1 over n and then we have the limits are naught and pi and then we have minus the integral between naught and pi. We now differentiate the x that removes it and so we're left with just the integral of sine nx over n dx like that. Now, we can look at the terms before we perform the final integral. We can hopefully see that the first term, the x sine nx over n, will give us 0, because sine is 0 at 0, and also integer multiples of phi, pi. So we can ignore the first term. We just need to cal calculate the second integral. So continuing, we have a naught is equal to 1 over pi, and then it's equal to minus, and now we have to integrate sine nx. If we integrate sine nx, that becomes minus cos nx, so that takes out the minus, and there's an additional factor of um, n. So we get plus cos nx over n squared, and then the limits are naught and pi like that. So we now put in the limits, we get 1 over pi, brackets, 
In fact, we can bring the n squared outside the brackets there, and we're going to get cos n pi for the upper limit and the lower limit is just minus 1 because cos of 0 is 1. We can look at this function now and see what values it has for various values of n. What we can hopefully see is that when n is even, a n is equal to 0 because cos of n pi where n is even, so cos of 2 pi, cos of 4 pi, etc. is 1. 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. When n is odd, however, cos n pi is minus 1. So a n then is equal to minus 2 over n squared pi. So only the odd a n's are non-zero, and these have a value equal to minus 2 over n squared pi. The final thing we have to do is calculate b n. So b n is given by 1 over pi. Again, we need to integrate between naught and pi. Remember, we have to integrate across a whole function, but because the function is 0 between pi and 2 pi, the integral is just between 0 and pi. And then we have x sine nx dx. So again, we're going to have to integrate this by parts, 1 over pi, brackets, Again, we want to get rid of the x, so the first thing we have is x, and then it's the integral of sine nx. We integrate sine nx, that becomes minus cos nx, and then there's a factor of n, naught and pi, and then it's minus, but because of the minus that came out of the integral, that becomes plus the integral of cos nx over n, between naught and pi, like that. Now, if we look at the integral that remains, when we integrate cos nx, again, we're going to be left with a sine nx over n squared. But again, because we're evaluating the integral at 0 and pi, sine of nx will give us 0 at both the upper and the lower limits, and so this final integral will give us no contribution to the overall result. It's just the first term in the brackets that's important and non-zero. We have to evaluate the first term in brackets, this term here. So what we get is we get that Bn is equal to minus 1 over n pi. And then the upper limit is pi cos n pi. The lower limit is 0 because of the factor x. When we evaluate that at x equals 0, that just gives us something equal to 0. So we get this result here. There's a cancellation of the factors of pi and that leaves us with minus 1 over n cos n pi. Now as we've seen in the lectures cos n pi can always be written as minus 1 to the n. If you think about it when n is an odd number cos n pi is minus 1 when n is even, so when we have 2 pi, 4 pi, etc., cos of 2 pi, 4 pi is 1. So we can write cos n pi like that. So we can write that bn is equal to minus minus 1 to the n over n pi. Alternatively, we could write this as minus 1 to the n plus 1 n pi. Both of those give the correct result for bn. So we've now calculated a naught, a n, and bn. So finally we can write down the result for the Fourier series. We can write that f of x is given it's a naught divided by 2. a naught was pi by 2. So a naught over 2 is pi by 4. Then minus 2 divided by pi. This is a constant for the a n. It's the sum n equals 1 to infinity, but only the odd values are non-zero. 1 divided by n squared cos nx, and then we'll have a separate summation for the bn's. We have a prefactor of 1 over pi, and then again it's the sum n equals 1 to infinity. Now for the bn's, all the terms are non-zero, so we have minus 1 to the n plus 1, over n and then sign nx and that's our final result.